In 2007, the year my son was to be born, I traveled to Zambia to teach photography at Chishawasha, a small budding AIDS orphanage near Zambia's capital, Lusaka. This was a pro bono effort on my part, though I was able to secure curricula and funding support from Kids with Cameras and a publishing option from Smithsonian Magazine. After pledges made by my own creative community, I was off to a good start. I had first heard about Chishawasha and the Zambian Children's Fund through a small gift of support my mother-in-law had made in our family's name. As it turned out, the Chishawasha Orphanage and School is an incredible grassroots effort. It was started by one individual, Kathy Padilla of Tucson, Arizona. A mother herself, she had read about the plight of Zambian AIDS orphans and decided to go and actually do something about it. Fifteen years later, Chishawasha houses 70 orphans, feeds and teaches an additional 70 village kids at its own primary school and supports many more overextended local families. On my visit to Chishawasha, I found what I saw to be incredibly inspiring. My own contribution, so I hoped, would be to gain the Zambian Children's Fund its deserved media exposure and to share with my young Zambian students the joy and new perspectives photography has always brought to my life. It quickly became clear that whatever I could impress upon my young students, both in photography and in the joy department, they would really be the ones to teach me. To realize a complex project like this one, I had to wear many different hats. Fundraiser, documentarian, photography workshop teacher, editor, curator, web and exhibition designer, and now video editor. But thanks to wonderful kids and a wonderfully supportive staff, my time spent at Chishawasha was not just the easiest part of this project, but such a great pleasure. I taught, coordinated and documented every day for a very intense three weeks. After one final crazy push, we had created individual portfolios and mounted an impressive show at the orphanage school and transformed a brand new classroom into the finest photography gallery ever to cater to a local Zambian community. Deservedly so, my students were glowing with pride for our creative team effort. In short, we all had a blast and I could already see that I had my work cut out. Before my eyes were the creative seeds of a fantastic fine art exhibition. When Klaus first came to me with his project uh, and described uh, his, uh, his proposal of going to Zambia teaching this workshop, uh, providing cameras, film and cameras, uh, for the kids to go in, in a sense document their life, document their surroundings, uh, but also have a creativity, a creative freedom to do so. Um, it really was something that I thought I would like to get involved with. After seeing the the film, after his, his first edit coming back, I looked at the pictures and they were really great, which just reinforced uh, my original uh, idea of, of getting involved. There's an incredible beauty and life to these pictures and there's an honesty to them, intimacy and honesty about their, their, their life that they're living. Having lost one and even both parents to an infectious disease. And I think as a viewer of photography or imagery, it's, it's refreshing to, to look at imagery that is completely honest and not contrived. Journalism, photography has really put in front of people 
imagery and uh, knowledge of what's going on in the world in a much greater capacity than it ever has. And this is really starting from the 60s. Um, and it's, it's even now when you have you know, social networking and everyone's connected, there's so much photography that's being uh, presented, but how much of it is really uh, quality focused um, um, projects? A lot of it disappears, it gets dumped. Humanity is, is in such need of uh, positive imagery in, uh, nowadays, and uh, kids have the ability, they see the world more positive, um, they ha and they have solutions. They, they, they're, young people's minds are brilliant, and um, I, I, I look forward to seeing images um, by younger people more and more, um, like the work that Klaus is involved in, it's, uh, it's pretty spectacular. The best photographers are poets. I mean, they're visual poets. They they capture they capture something that other people can't. Either they can't see themselves, or they can't capture it themselves. Um, you know, they they spend time with the subject, whether it's uh, whether it's a landscape, whether it's an, an object, whether it's a person, and they form a connection with it, and they see something in that um, that uh, is elusive. And, and I see that with Klaus. You know, he spent three weeks, I, I know the orphans a little bit more, that project a little bit more, he spent three weeks with them and, you know, they called him uncle, Uncle Klaus. So he developed uh, a relationship with them and I think that's pretty evident in, uh, in his images. As a person who is involved in social change, professionally and, well, personally. I mean, I got into it because of personal reasons, but it has changed my career, and now I do work that has some sort of social impact. Um, Klaus's work has that importance because, I mean, he's capturing, you know, in the case of Tibetan refugees, he's showing you what their life is like. In the case of the Zambian orphans, Klaus is showing you what life is like for these orphans, um, all of whom have been touched by AIDS. Either they have HIV or AIDS or their family did, and that's why they're orphaned. Um, telling the story is becoming more and more important. It's not about statistics anymore. You know, 70% um, of Zambian population lives for, for under a dollar a day or something or whatever the statistic is. That can be impactful, but not nearly as impactful as showing the day-to-day -day lives of those people. Um, and that's what Klaus is doing. If you think of some of the really uh, impactful social change campaigns, many of them, if not all, have had really strong images. 
uh, you know, think of, I can't think of the photographer's name, but the Vietnam War, you know, you have the, the child running down the street with his skin kind of falling off and crying. That image really changed the way that people saw the war. Klaus is capturing a more subtle thing because he's, he's showing the lives of these children in the case of the, the Zambian orphans. Um, and he's showing that, that you know, they, there is hope there. These children, um, you know, they're, they're beautiful children. They're, they're in very unfortunate circumstances, um, but he captures the hope and the beauty that they have. And he makes you want to look at the images. And if you can look at that image, you're, you're drawn to those images because they're beautiful, um, because they speak to you in some way. And beauty is subjective. I mean, it could be a, a, a very sort of, you know, dark beauty about them. Um, although in, in Klaus's images, I don't see, I see optimism. Here in New York, time flies. Everyone chases after or is chased by the next big thing in their lives. For me, that was being a first-time parent in New York. But we did manage to come full circle with this project in more than one way. Smithsonian Magazine ran workshop students' images front and center. We also arrived at a beautiful, surprisingly timeless exhibition titled Point Shoot C. Here it is, being shown during BAM's 2010 Dance Africa event. For a long weekend in May, Zambian and other African dance performers were celebrated on stage, while the visiting public had opportunity to appreciate our work. Two months later, a complete edition of Point Should See was purchased by the U.S. Department of State to beautify its new American embassy offices in Lusaka. I would have loved to see that in person and to see my students again more grown up. And yes, my son, he is wonderful. At five years of age, he begins to see the world beyond himself. I would love to visit Shishawasha with him one day he would have a blast.